Hey everybody, welcome to another video by Macintosh Training. Uh, appreciate you guys checking me out. If you could subscribe and like, I'd really, really appreciate it. Um, so in this video, we're going to look at basically hiding uh, activity done on your Mac. Um, and this isn't complete, obviously. Um, there isn't really any way to completely hide any activity that you're doing on your Mac, but um, this will hide most things. Uh, it's a good way to kind of um, stay anonymous on your own Mac. Now, one thing I need to clarify, I'm only referring to uh, keeping you anonymous as far as other users that are getting on your, physically speaking, getting on your computer. This isn't going to keep you anonymous on the um, on the web. Uh, we need to look at VPNs or some other proxy. So that, that's that's a different subject. What I'm talking about in this video is uh, other people who are using your own computer, uh, trying to keep you whatever you're doing on your Mac uh, uh, as as being anonymous. So first off, I would just suggest if you are trying to to you know. You don't want people getting into your information on your Mac. Uh, then don't let other people use it. <laughs> that's the first thing. Um, but if that's not an option, um, the second thing uh, that I would suggest is make sure you're using a different account, a different user account. Um, don't share accounts with people. Um, this is just best practice in general as far as uh, Apple has built this into Mac OS so that you can have your own settings, you know, your, your own iCloud account, your own Safari history, your own dock, you know, all those settings are, are there for you to customize to yourself. And if uh, other people are using your same account, not only uh, are they going to, you know, have, be able to act, see your settings or change settings, that sort of thing. I mean, if they know the login password, they can get into your keychain, they can find out any of your passwords that you have, so and you don't want that. So I would suggest, go ahead and open System Prefs, um, go to Users and Groups, and this is where you would go to create new accounts. Um, you would basically just click this lock, enter your password, um, and then uh, click the plus to make a new user, and uh, you know, depending on who, who else you're sharing your computer with. You know, if it's with your kids, you may want to use parental controls. You may not want to make them an admin. Um, you know, if it's a, a spouse or, or, you know, a roommate or someone else, you may, you may want to make them an admin. Um, just keep in mind, there are ways to break into other people's accounts or see what's in there if you've got another admin on the computer. Um, that's for another video. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, if, if, if you're sharing a computer with other people, you want to make sure that you are using separate accounts. So that means either make an account for the other person or you make your own account, start a new account. You know, don't tell them what your password is and, and that way, uh, you know, you can, you can use your own account. Um, however, above and beyond that, let's say that you want to you don't want there to be any trace of what you're doing, basically. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. So first of all, I would suggest, let's say that you just want to use a browser and you don't want there to be any, any history of what you did in the browser. Um, so Safari, Firefox, Chrome, they all have a pretty simple way of doing this, which is, uh, so in Safari, we'll go ahead and just show you there. If you go up to File, you'll see there's a private window. If you open up that private window, it tells you private browsing is enabled. Safari will keep your browsing history private for all tabs in this window. After you close this window, Safari won't remember the page you visited, your search history, your autofill information. So if you're just looking to hide, you just want to, you know, go to, you know, some particular site or something, you don't want there to be a record of it. I would suggest just open a private browsing window and go to the site and then close the private browsing window and you're done. Um, there are some other settings you can do. I mean, if you go into preferences, uh, you do have the ability to say that Safari automatically will open with a new private window, which means 
all of all of the stuff that you do in, in your Safari session is going to be private. Now you may not want that, you know, if you're if you're using autofill, you know, it's not usually an, an everyday kind of thing where you want it to just automatically open with a private window. Um, but that is an option that you have to you. So um, you could do that. However, I think there there is one way that for for other things, let's say it's not just the browser, but let's say you're you're accessing files, um, you know, they're, they're, you're downloading things. Um, I don't know. Let's say there's just other settings, other other things that you're accessing on the Mac, and you don't you don't want anyone to see that. Well, there's a real easy way to do this. Um, first of all, if we go into System Preps and Users and Groups again, you see there's this guest user. And what the guest user is, is any, anyone can log, if the guest user is enabled, anyone can log in as a guest. Um, and you just uh, either select guest from the, from the, the login screen, um, if you were to go to, to log out here, and then when, when you're at the login screen, you could select guest or type guest and, and it'll let you in. Um, and then upon logging out, the guest user does not save any information. It destroys whatever was in that account when you log out. Um, so if that suits your purposes, I mean, you could just log in to guest, do whatever you got to do and log out and it's going to destroy anything that was in that account. Um, however, the guest user by default, you'll see it's managed and that's because it has some parental controls turned on. And so if you don't want to be restricted by that, what I would suggest you do is create a new user. So log in create a new user, make it an admin, you know, call it something, I don't know, stupid, like test, just give it the same password, create the user, and uh, it'll create a user account and make it an admin. So you could log out of this account, log out of Apple, log into the test account, do whatever it is you got to do, and then log back into your Apple account, come back here to users and groups, Click on test and click delete. It's going to say, are you sure you want to delete this account? Just go down to delete the home folder. Because right now, all of test stuff are, is in here. It's already all there. See, it created a, uh, a home folder for test. But if we want to wipe this out, just go in here and click delete. Deletes that user. Deletes all of test stuff. Test, test is gone. Um, so that's a, a, a really good way to just kind of clear everything out. Um, now, that pretty much provides you with anonymity on your computer, locally speaking. Um, a couple of things where it still could be detected would be in any logs. So your computer does keep logs of, of you know, what you're accessing, files you've accessed, that sort of thing. Those logs are blown through. I mean, they, your, your, your computer is making all sorts of logs every single second. So I wouldn't really worry about that. Um, there's a small chance that someone could go through your logs and find out that you created a test user and access certain files. Um, but technically speaking, there are logs that, that would show that that happened. Um, and the only other thing is if you install something, in that test user. Let's say you install it and it puts items in your applications. You know, let's say you install an application. This applications folder, when you delete that that user, whatever you installed is still here. You know, it's not going away. So if you are installing things or making system-wide changes within that user account, those are not going to go away. Okay? If you really need to do that and you want to be anonymous about it, at that point, it's probably time to either get a separate computer that you're not going to let anyone else use, or, I mean, you could even go as far as creating a virtual machine. Um, now, that is a completely other subject, and if you're really interested in that, uh, maybe I'll make another video about that um, to make a self-contained Mac OS operating system um, or Windows or whatever operating system it is you want to use. Um, but long story short, if you're trying to make 
uh, administrative changes, I would not suggest doing that uh, because there's a lot of a lot of stuff that you would have to have to cover. If you're installing an application, you don't want people to know you installed that application. There's a good chance that just deleting it out of applications isn't going to get rid of it. There's going to be stuff in your library. There's going to be stuff in your home folder library, uh, and 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 yeah, it's going to be messy. Um, but just as a general rule of thumb, if you're trying to access files, access websites, that sort of thing, creating a user, doing your work, and then deleting that user is probably the best way to go about it. Also, you can use the private browsing windows. Um, just a note, Google Chrome does call it an incognito window. So if you're using Chrome and you want to use private browsing, that's what you would select. Um, if you have any questions, comments, uh, you know, go ahead, leave them, leave them down in the comments field. Um, again, please like, subscribe. Um, appreciate you guys watching. More videos on the way for Macintosh training. We'll see you next time.